some glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away to that home on God's celestial shore I'll fly away I'll fly away oh glory I'll fly away when I die hallelujah by and by I'll fly away just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to that land where joy will never end I'll fly away I'll fly away oh glory I'll fly away when I die hallelujah by and by I'll fly away well tired and so weary but I must go
It's not time to make a change Just relax, take it easy You're still young, that's your fault There's so much you have to know Find a girl, settle down If you want, you can marry Look at me, I am old but I'm happy was once like you are now And I know that it's not easy To be calm When you found something going on But take your time Think a lot Why think of everything you've got For you will still be here tomorrow But your dreams may not To explain when I do, he turns away again. It's always been the same, same old story. From the moment I could talk, I was ordered to listen. Now there's a way, and I know that I have to go away. I know I have. To go. change just sit down take it slowly you're still young that's your fault there's so much you have to go through find a girl settle down if you want you can marry look at me i am old but i'm happy Keeping all the things I knew inside It's hard, but it's harder to ignore it this If they were right, I'd agree But it's them they know, not me Now there's a way, and I know That I have to go away I know I have to go Make sure I don't hit that button that Nathan told me not to hit. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The Swagler family, I'd like to thank you all for coming. They've asked me to lead a, a couple songs before Nathan speaks and maybe a couple afterwards. And so we'll do that. Bear with me. Let's turn to page uh, number 805. <coughs> 805. <coughs> and if you would ever they have a song book, because we don't have the screen available today, so you want to grab a song book. <coughs> I come to the garden on what blue is still on the roses and the voice I hear calling on my ear the Son of God is over and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me
I want to first of all start uh, by um, giving my condolences to the family, close family. Uh, the uh, um, I, I know that you know, we all know that death is is not a fun time, but the reality of the situation for the Christian is a far greater reality because we know where our loved ones go. Bill Schweigler uh, passed on Friday. June 9th, 2023, in Grand Blanc, Michigan. Uh, Mr. Schweigler uh, was, of course, in failing health at that time. Mr. Schweigler was uh, born August 10th, 1943, to Leslie Lewis Schweigler in the former Rumi, uh, Ruby Nadine uh, Clark in Marie's County, Missouri. And apparently there was a funny story attached to that because he was born in a county, uh, where there was no city at the current time. So this, of course, caused some complications 
for, the, uh, for records purposes, especially when Jason and Shannon got married. Uh, they wanted the city where Bill was born, and they had to try and convince him that there was no city there. I believe I got those facts right, correct? That's hilarious. Imagine the headache with that. Bill was married on September 11th, 1965, in Wellston, Missouri, to Judy Ann Warren, uh, a member of the Price Road Church of Christ in Brownsville, Texas. He had been a retiree of the community uh, of Mission, Texas. He worked for General Motors for over 36 years. Bill also served in the missionary, uh, the missionary, the Missouri National, uh, Air National Guard for 25 years. He was baptized into Christ. Um, he was a- an active, working member of the Church of Christ everywhere he lived. And he served as an elder at Schwartz Creek uh, at that congregation. He also served as a, de- uh, a deacon at the West End Congregation. He loved preaching, and he loved teaching the gospel, which I'm told that he did in just about every church that he attended. He was always teaching the saints. He was also active in online ministry uh, throughout his retirement with the Online Academy of Biblical Studies. This man influenced many, many people throughout his time uh, of doing online ministry. And the impact, uh, the impact that he left um, on so many people, I think, can be adequately shown in a very special comment that was left by someone he had taught on the Facebook post about his passing. And I'm not going to try to summarize that. I'm just going to read it straight to you because it's, it's touching and it really shows the impact that this man had on the lives around him. So this is from a man named Najiro Hiram. I believe I'm pronouncing that to the best of my ability. It says, hello, Jason Swagler. Sorry for the loss of your dad. And please accept my heartfelt um, condolences and pass the same to your mom, Judy. He mentioned her often as we became friends through the studies. He was the first Christian I ever interacted with. Though I never met him in person, he taught me the gospel of Jesus Christ online, which led to my baptism in December 12th, 2014. We were in touch since then, and I was hoping to see him later this year in uh, October. He was always very supportive of me as I was searching for the truth. I talked about, uh, about him always when I tell people about my journey to Christ. I loved him as my father, and I always asked him many questions, uh, as many questions as I had, because he always had good answers for me, no matter what I was looking for. Words are not enough to say how much my life changed because of his strong impact. I have missed reading from him, and now I know that I will never read from him again on this side of eternity. I am sad right now. However, I have confidence that we will meet again in heaven. I know at least two other men like me who he taught, and they became very strong preachers of the gospel here in Kenya and many others all over the world. You will forever be in my heart, brother William Schweigler. You helped me change my life forever. Fare thee well, my friend, mentor, and teacher of God's word. I will forever be thankful and forever talk about you and how you helped me see the truth about eternity, brother Hiram from Kenya. His contributions to the Lord's church uh, didn't just end with his online ministry. Of course, it was a big part of his retirement. Um, But uh, it didn't just end with the online ministry, uh, teaching and preaching in different uh, uh, congregations. He he also was involved with mission work, both physically, like during his trip to St. Vincent in South America, and financially with his support to John Grubb in Taiwan, where I'm told uh, he did... No, 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 that was the... It was the other one, actually. I I was told that he did some street preaching in St. Vincent, and then financially... He supported John Grubb in Taiwan and Ronald Gilbert in Africa. Bill himself enjoyed geology. He enjoyed reading. He enjoyed gardening and hunting. As Jason has told me, he was a man of the soil. And apparently there's a little bit of dispute over if he is considered a farmer or not. But regardless, he liked to work the ground. I think there's a good common ground there. He was also a quiet man. Um, and you could probably count on one hand how many times he raised his voice using only 
just a few fingers on that hand. And speaking of fingers, apparently there was one time, I, I wish I could have seen this just for comedic value and to see how Jason got punished after this, but we'll see. Um, you know, apparently one of the only times that Jason's father ever yelled was during vacation to Kentucky when he was younger. Bill had his hand on like the roof of the car and his thumb was in the door, uh, the door frame. I don't know why. I don't know the circumstance behind what exactly happened. Maybe Jason just woke up and, and chose violence that day. I don't know. But somewhere along the way, as Bill had his hand on top of the frame and his thumb in the door frame, Jason decided to go ahead and slam it. And apparently he heard him not yell. Yell wasn't really the word that Jason used. It was more like scream. Um, and he said that he only heard his father ever raise his voice like that just a few times in his life. The other time was when, oh, is it the Raiders? Was that was it? Or it was the Rams. They won the Super Bowl. Yeah, and they were in the other room, and they heard this, like, yell, this scream. Um, and Judy thought it was Jason at the time. How old were you, Jason, at the time? You were 26. No, it wasn't Jason. No, it was Bill. <laughs> Bill let out a scream of victory. And that uh, concludes all the knowledge I have on how many times this gentle and quiet man raised his voice uh, in his life. Uh, from everything that I have gathered about um, Bill, everything I've learned about him in the past few weeks uh, from different individuals, um, I can tell you that he was a tremendous man with an amazing legacy. And uh, I, I certainly would have wanted to meet him uh, before his passing. Um, he had a legacy of service to the Lord in his church in many ways, <clears throat> and that he will be missed dearly by his loved ones and all those he had an impact on. But I think it right, I think it proper, to meditate on the driving force behind his character and what made him do the things that he did. Because he has an impressive resume, a lot of accomplishments, a lot of service, a lot of work. What made him do that? What, what made him do online ministry? What made him do the kind of thing where he would, he would be so involved in churches no matter where he went that he would teach and he would preach and sometimes he was an elder and sometimes he was a deacon? What would drive a man to do something like that? And that's simply this. Bill followed Jesus, the Lord of the earth, the friend of sinners, the Savior of his people. You don't do the things that Bill did in his life, all the wonderful things that I've heard that he's done. You don't do that without a strong faith in Jesus, a commendable, a commendable faith in Jesus, something that is to be applauded. An example of faith that we would all benefit from following. Bill, like so many Christians, knew the problem of mankind's sinful state. That death happens to all of us, as sad as it is. And that death was caused by sin entering into the world as a consequence. To the world around us who do not know God, death is frightening. Leaving us uh, as its victims with no hope. The lights are turned out and whoever you were fades into the void of nothingness. Meanwhile, their own conscience bears witness that this is not an end. But it's an open gate to come face to face with the Creator, the Creator of us all. Hebrews 9.27 says, And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes the judgment. This is the fear of, of death, the sting of death for all mankind, to come face to face with the Creator and give an account for what we have done. Good thing I'm not ending the lesson there. That sounds kind of gloomy, right? Well, for the Christian, like our brother Bill, Death is not something to be feared any longer. It is a welcome friend, actually, because the Christian has faith in Jesus, Jesus who lived perfect life for us, satisfying the commands of God, Jesus who died on the cross for our sins, satisfying the justice of God for our sins, Jesus who takes away the sting of death because of his resurrection. That same Jesus right now is at the right hand of the Father, who waits for all of his followers to enjoy the paradise with him 
in God's presence. And guess who's there now? Bill's there now. Bill is there now, experiencing life, joy, and pleasure. Psalm 1611, one of my favorite books, uh, one of my favorite verses in uh, the book of Psalms, it says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We don't have to mourn. We don't. We get to celebrate. We get to commend our brother on a life well lived. But the biggest accommodation he could get was actually already given to him. And it wasn't by me, it wasn't by you, it wasn't by anybody here. It was by Jesus. When he crossed over into that realm, he got a well done, good and faithful servant. That is the best compliment that you could ever have. And he got that. He got that. And one day, we all can have that too. Let's remember Bill. If he's left some sort of imprint on your life, if he's left something that you can use in your life, maybe you use him as an example for something. Do it. You know, don't choose bitterness. Too many people choose bitterness whenever a loved one dies. Don't do that. Because the person who moves on would want you to remember the good things that they did. They want you to remember the, all, all the things that they taught you. It's how you're going to honor him. It's how you're going to honor his memory. This isn't, you know, goodbye forever. It's just goodbye for now. We'll see him again one day. We all will. If we follow his example, we follow Jesus Christ. Make him the center of our life. That's what Bill did. I wonder... I wonder if he's singing right now. Because I was told he loved to sing. Now, what kind of singing was it? Was it like a around the house kind of singing, just randomly, or singing in churches? Churches. He loved to sing. I wonder how many myriads he's leading in song right now. It's a good thought. It's a good thought. That's the comfort we have. That's the comfort we can look forward to. That's the comfort that Bill is enjoying right now, singing in the halls of heaven. We thank Bill for his service in the church. We all thank him for the impact that he's had on our lives. We don't forget him. We remember him. We honor him. We don't turn bitter. At this time, I'm going to have Danny come back up and lead two more songs, and then we're going to close it out in prayer. I just want to tell you this, this an honor and a privilege to be able to do this for Bill and for the Swagler family. I always consider it a privilege when somebody asks me to do this. Uh, it makes me feel good that I can do this. And so thanks for asking me, Jason. Um, a quick thing uh, on Bill is I, I didn't know Bill all that great neither. But I will tell you this. Every time that I spoke with him, every time I had a chance to visit with him when he was at Mount Morris, he always had something very interesting to say, something very knowledgeable to say, especially when it came to the scriptures, scriptures in the Bible. And I remember one time I was sitting at Mount Morris, there was an activity going on there, and there's this screaming and yelling and having a good time, and me and Bill sitting over the corner by ourselves just talking uh, between us, and I, I, I remember that, and I just really enjoy that. And I told Jason, I think, that Bill is just a fantastic person and a good man. And not to be proud of him, but know that he's, he's in heaven, and he's a Christian. And that's the main thing, just like Nathan said. We will see him again someday. Seventh, 773 for our next song. 
773. I fly away 
Father, God, you are the creator of life. And you're not just the creator of temporal life, you are the creator of eternal life. And it is through you and it is through Jesus' finished work on the cross that we can look forward to this eternal life. And we know that it is the eternal life that our brother Bill is enjoying right now in your presence. We thank you so much for being a faithful God. We thank you so much for being good to us and good to Bill and good to the families here. We pray, God, that as we say goodbye to a brother, you would put it in our minds to remember, to know that this is not the end. That if we are faithful to you, because of Christ's finished work on the cross, we will see him again. And most importantly, we will be with you, Lord. I pray that you would forgive us of our sins, and I pray that you would keep the memory, the influence, the impact of Bill in its proper place in our hearts so that we can learn from him, his example. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.